Greetings everyone, I am Valentina Santini and I welcome you all to the second lecture of our second issue of the Bulletin of Near Eastern Excavations and Research. This second issue uh, is dedicated as the first uh, Bulletin to um, current archaeological excavations and ongoing projects in the Near East and it is intended both uh, for the scientific public and the general one. As you probably know if you attended uh, the previous lectures of the bulletin, at the end of the lecture there will be a section dedicated to the questions. And therefore, during the course of the all uh, presentation, if you do have questions, if you want to comment on the topic of this lecture, you can write your questions or your comments in the live chat of YouTube, which is here in this page, and at the end of the lecture I'm going to read uh, these questions or these comments to our speaker. So now it's time to introduce our speaker, who is going to discuss uh, Enis Rusainili Eidurukai, the last great castle of the Urartu Kingdom, a general review of the works in the last 30 years. Mehmet Ishkl from the Ataturk University has a room. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, good evening uh, good, uh, to everybody. Uh, thank you very much for this good and nice introduced. Uh, uh, I want to, uh, I would like to thank uh, for your invitation and giving this opportunity uh, now uh, I am going to talk with you about Urartian archaeology and one of its longest running excavation projects, the excavations at uh, INS site in one Eastern Turkey. Uh, first of all, I will give a brief and general summary of past excavations and then focus on recent studies. Uh, first of all, I want to talk about uh, location of the castle. Uh, Ayanis Castle is located uh, 35 kilometers north of the modern one city, and the castle is on the eastern shore, uh, very close to Ban Lake. Also, castle is very close and uh, giving the name uh, modern art village. Uh, the, our village uh, old name is Ayanis. Uh, Ayanis castle is one of the best preserved of Urartian castle. Uh, Rusa, who was the last Greek king of this kingdom, uh, depending on the recent uh, literary evidence, and who was the son of the Argishti II, built Ayanis castle and uh, he was responsible for five other significant castles on the Urartian homeland. Also, you can see the five uh, castles uh, in this map. There is no doubt about the founder of the castle. Uh, as we have inscribed evidence such as building inscriptions, several seals, bullae, and various inscribed bronze objects. Also, wood samples taken from Aenis Castle have been subject to dental chronology analysis and the results confirm to inscribed evidence and point to the date of uh, 677 and 673 BC for the building of the castle. Uh, you can see the excavation areas. Uh, systematic and regular excavations at INS Castle have continued for 30 years and have presented several innovations regarding Urartian culture and art. Ongoing excavations at the Stadel and Outer Town have brought to light a large number of storage rooms as well as, well as religious, royal, public, and civil buildings. The unique and various artifacts from these buildings have created one of the most exclusive collections of Urartian art to be found. 
Ionis Castle is comprised of two main parts, the Stadel and Outer Town. The Stadel is uh, four, 400 meters in size. It's estimated that the Outer Town covers of 80 hectares depending on survey results. Now, uh, I want to brief summary of the works in the first 20 years. The excavation on Aenis has been ongoing since 1989, and this year during our summer season will be celebrate our 31th year of operation. For its first 23 years, the director of Aenis excavation was Professor Altan Chilingiroğlu, who also was my supervisor. Also, I uh, have been uh, working on their uh, first year of the, my university. Now I have been serving in the direct director's role for the past seven years. Thus, we can divide the excavation into early and late or new periods. First of all, I would like to briefly summarize the early excavation covering the first 20 years. Excavation have performed on the Stadel and outer town of Aenis castles within the main areas excavated from eastward to westward being the fortification walls of the castle in eastern and southern sector, a monumental gate on southeastern corner of the Stadel, East Pillared Hall, Temple Area, Domestic and Filthic Buildings, and Western Storage Buildings. Now, I, uh, firstly, I would like to give uh, very little information about the field works in outer town of Aenis. As we know that, uh, we know very few uh, information about uh, uh, Urartian towns or villages. Mostly information, our information coming from the Stadels. Therefore, the studies at INS Outer Town are extremely valuable. The works at Outer Town performed by international team under direction of Paul Zimanski and Elizabeth Stones between 1997 and 2006. The field works which yielded at Two operation areas presented very interesting, the valuable results about the subject. You can see the slides, two operation areas. Uh, one of them is Pınarbaşı, other one is Güneytepe, very close to Stadel. But we have not enough time. I cannot mention the, these results very detailed, but you know, uh, most of the results uh, has been shared by various publications by the uh, Paul Zimanski and Elizabeth Stone. In new period, we would like to continue this project, of course, if the conditions are right. Now, uh, we, uh, we focus on the Stadel. I want to talk about uh, the working field works in the Stadel area. First of all, uh, the Stadel walls and the monumental gate. The monumental fortification wall of the Aenis Stadel enclosed uh, the six hectares area. According to the route uh, estimated almost uh, 300 meters of the Stadel's walls have been brought to the Lida to now. Accordingly, we, as we can estimate that the total length of these walls might be uh, Eight, uh, 850 meters. In particularly, the southern and eastern part of the Stadel's walls uh, have been well preserved. The foundation of the eastern part consists of rarely have middle or large sized polygonal limestone blocks. The mud brick superstructure of eastern wall cannot be preserved as much as uh, southern part. As for the southern part, it was built with rectangular smoothed olivine basalt blocks. 
The centers of these blocks were left convex and his feature created a different appearance to the wall, especially in the light of. The height of the andesite blocks with the foundation of the southern fortification walls is almost two meters and it is one of the finest examples of Rathian military architecture. The almost 50 or 20 meters in the height of the mud brick spur structure might have been raised above the foundation with andesite blocks. We can imagine that the same monumental mud brick spur structure wall on the foundation of the eastern fortification walls may have been constructed with polygonal limestone blocks. Now uh, we are talking about the monumental gate. Uh, the main and no only gate of the castle is located on the southeastern corner of the Stadel. This monumental gate was built with smooth and rectangular basalt blocks similar to the southern fortification wall. The wide of the gate is three meters and it has a tower on others, either, other side. Some rooms relating to the gate building have been uncovered during excavations performed in, the, in that area. The excavations also show that this gate was obliterated by a mud brick wall, which was built later. The new gate or gates might have been built after its destruction. However, we still don't know how entry was gained to the Stadel. Also, during the recent excavations, two test trenches have been opened to understand the north and west side of the Stadel. Accordingly, the walls in the both sectors resemble the eastern wall in terms of material and technique. The northern wall is heavily damaged and few rooms, few rows of stones have been preserved. In the west, the walls are in better condition and we were exposed on the bedrock with their white terraces and channels. You can see the last uh, situation of the, our trench. In uh, two years ago, uh, an archaeological archeo project was undertaken to determine the source of the stones of fortification walls and the analysis of results of this project show that the limestone, especially in the eastern part of the fortification wall, might have been obtained from the bedrock of the hill. These basalt blocks might have been supplied from a quarry in the Tmar area, which is uh, 30 kilometers away from Ayanis. You can see the geological map, uh, the Tmar area. Now, uh, going on the Stadel excavation, first of all, I want to talk about in the first monumental building, uh, very close the entrance of the Stadel. In the eastern part of the Stadel, there is a pillared hall, which has been named the East Pillared Hall. Only a part of it has been unearthed. This monumental building, uh, 36 and uh, 27 meters in size and has 14 large pillars with foundations of andesite stone blocks, such as we will see in the temple area. In this uh, building, there are storage rooms, including thousands of pieces of pottery on the floor of the building. As it is very close to the temple area, this building might be connected with the temple area or temple. But we, um, we cannot understand the uh, total plan of the function of the building, but uh, our uh, professor Chilingiroğlu suggested that the, this building uh, may be 
Ashuhisi in Urartu language, which we know the Ashuhisi building, uh, but we don't know its function precisely, this kind of building. Now, uh, we are in the temple area. Uh, this is very uh, la intensive and very uh, large complex building uh, temple area. In this area, the cella, pillared hall with storage rooms, the hall with the podium and northern ro rooms. In the stadel towards uh, the west of the stadel, there is uh, another excavated area, which is the temple area, including a complex. This area consists of a large pillared hall, including storage rooms, a Susi temple building, the hall with podium and rooms in Northern site. These buildings are positioned on the most central and highest location of the Stadel. Undoubtedly, this complex is the most important building group of the Stadel. Apart from the hall, with podium, most of the structures in the temple area were unearthed during the early period excavation. Now let's go to know these structures more closely. A total of 12 large pillars with underseat stone blocks enclose the Susi temple, which was located in the center of the monumental pillarite hall. According to the last measurement, the size of the courtyard, 33 and 33 and 37 meters, as you see the plan. The Susi Temple's building rests on the eastern monumental mud brick walls of the Pillared Hall, and these walls were painted and decorated with blue, red, and white colors. Unfortunately, these paintings are not well preserved probably because of the intense fire and only some fragments have been found during the excavation. The work that has been continuing in the temple area since 1996 couldn't solve the problem of the main entrance to the courtyard and this area. Two years ago, a new storage room and a monumental entrance were found in the southeast corner of the temple area. You see that this gate was this two meters wide uh, and marble pivot door, the main entrance to the temple, or was it a communicating door to another space? Uh, unfortunately, uh, we cannot say anything because the excavation in this area not finished yet. Next year, we will continue this area and we can understand clearly this main gate or not. The southern part of the temple area, which had sustained the most damage because of topographical conditions, included side by side storage rooms. In these rooms, many metal objects, mostly weapons, have been found. They were dedicated to Haldi, who was the chief god of the Urartian Pantheon. Apart from these weapons, many objects concerning religious activities have been found in the temple area. They serve to help us understand Urartian religion and its activities and rituals. Until now, six of these storage rooms have been discovered. Two years ago, during the ongoing studies in this area, a new storage room was discovered. This seventh room, measuring eight and four meters, is larger than the others. It's interesting that the standard square plan of the temple courtyard was excluded in order to construct these storage rooms. This is surprising considering the attention given to symmetry in Rartian architecture. Although the excavation was not completed, 
dozens of metal artifacts de dedicated to the gods Haldi were found in this room like others. Among them, five iron helmets are particularly striking. As it is known, the number of helmets which made of iron have been found in the excavations until now is only one. Even this finding group reflects the world of Aenis. The Susi temple building, which was dedicated to Haldi, is one of the best preserved examples of Urartian architecture. Featuring the typical square planet Urartian temple, the front faces of the temple are covered with one of the longest Urartian inscriptions ever discovered. These inscriptions gives important information to us about the Rusa period, Aenis castle, and Urartian culture. The floor of the temple was paved with 90 alabaster slabs, and the smooth andazit blocks of the temple were decorated with figures and motifs from Urartian mythology, as you see in the... Uh... Also, the insides of these inlay decorations were filled by painted softer with stone fragments, you can see. This is a unique technique and for no special only to Aenis Castle. Unfortunately, the mud brick part of the walls, the cella, could be partly preserved. Also, there is a large alabaster and onyx platform with decorated lines and naturalistic motifs in incised technique inside cella. The sides of this platform might have been covered with golden plate with decorated animal figures, mostly lines. During the excavation, some fragments of this golden plate have been found inside the temple, and also the traces of this plate can still be seen on the sides of the platform. Yeah, you can see the incised decoration on the uh, surface of the onyx platform. Now, uh, the existence of a number of unexcavated rooms in the northern side of the temple complex is known from older excavations and aerial photographs. Now, we have started excavate these rooms uh, last season. The excavation of a large room in the e e northwest corner has been started. This place also has a door opening to the temple courtyard. The plan and function of this room have not been clearly understood since the works, field works have just started. In the next season, these rooms uh, will be excavated and plan of the whole temple complex will be revealed. The next excavated area is located on the western side of the temple area. In this area, nine, nine rectangular and square planet mud brick buildings have been brought to the light. These buildings are intercorrelated. Although they are very close to the temple area, their connection with the temple cannot be determined yet in an architectural respect. With reference to the many finds, these buildings could have served in daily usage and production activities, as well as religious activities and rituals for monarch. Although they seem like domestic characteristics, so the excavator collect the domestic structures. They seem to have been used for storage and food purpose as well as domestic. To the west of the Stadel is the excavation area known as the Western Storage Rooms. In fact, this location is the 
place with the most beautiful view of the Stadel. These rooms lie in a north-south direction and are arranged on both sides of a main wall which reaches out in a west-east direction in the center of the Stadel. These storage rooms, which could have been two folds, are designed in the form of steps, depending on the lie of the land. On the floors of these rooms, jacks and hundreds of pitoy, which were half buried, have been found. Also, several bullae have been found here. For now, for now, 10 storage rooms have been uncovered and these rooms with their wealth of findings are very important for understanding the storage systems and economic structures of the Urartian state. Now, uh, after the summarizing of the first 20 years, uh, I want to talk with the, our recent studies and I will focus on the, the whole with podium also in now, uh, temple area still. The most recent works for five seasons between the years 2014 and 2018 at Ayenis has focused on the temple area. A new monumental building was discovered during these works. This new monumental building is located on the east of the temple area and just behind the core temple of the Haldi. This new building, renamed as the, the Hall with Podium, is an authentic structure that causes a revision in what has already been known about Asuratian and an increase is in the questions regarding the art in archaeology. The hall with podium has generally a rectangular plan and is made up of a large main room and a rather smaller back room. The main room that con constitutes the center of the hall has the size of 22 meters at the direction of north and south and eight meters at the direction of east and west. The back room, the entrance of which is provided through a gate from the hall, is a small place the size of which are 4.4 uh, uh, meters at the direction of north-south and eight meters at the direction of east and west. The thickness of mud brick walls, which surround the place and occasionally reach two meters in height, range from two meters to four meters to two meters. The walls, which are plastered and painted, have been exposed to a serious fire and later were replastered and repainted. On the walls, which are colored in blue, no wall paintings were detected. On the west wall of the building, there are two entrances that may be door. First entrance space on the western wall of the hall that separates the temple area from the hall with podium. It is also of three meters in height. The second entrance is in the northeast corner of the courtyard. Building sticks were found at the front of this entrance in earlier excavation. You can see the, these building discs. In addition, this entrance, whose floor is covered with onyx slabs, has been narrowed with a renovation. On the eastern wall of the hall with podium, on the center line of this huge door, an entrance between the hall and East Pillared Hall was also detected. The wide of this door entrance is also of three meters, just like the other one. 
The floor of the hall with podium is paved with two different types of materials. While the 15 square meters area, which is located on the southwestern corner of the place, assumed to have served a different purpose, is paved with onyx blocks. The rest of the floor is paved with mud brick blocks. This area between the podium and western wall is paved with 49 alabaster blocks with the size of 50 and 50 centimeters. It's surprising that no fumbling regarding the cover coat of this monumental building was identified. Doubtlessly, thinking of the harsh winter conditions, it doesn't seem much rational for such a structure, which is expected to be a critical and extraordinary for its internal design, to have been left uncovered. On the other hand, the findings indicate that the building may have two floors, but not we are sure. Decidedly, the most important and striking architectural element of this monumental structure is the alabaster or onyx podium that is located on the southern side of the hall. Up until now, only such like element was attained on the structure of core temple that belongs to the god Haldi in Aenis. For now, this is the second sample for Aenis and Urartu. The dimensions of the onyx podium are, as we can see on the slide, it is comprised of total 15 alabaster blocks in order to disconnect the podium from the ground and provide its statics. It's placed upon bounding timber, timbers. After the interior of the podium is paved with timber and mud brick, the exterior of it's covered with onyx flags. The surface of the platform is adorned with highly elegant motifs through incised technique. The composition created by the antithetically positioned winged creatures situated on the both sides of tree of life repeats the same schema after each three bands. There is portrayed a stylized winged line and on the first band and eagle-headed line bodied and winged griffon on the second band. The sphinx in headed in various types on the third band. All these pre-mentioned mythological creatures are adorned and antithetically positioned style across the motif of the tree of life. Along the borders of the podium mosaics with 3.5 centimeters diameters and bonded to the marble by nails are detected. While these mosaics are observed in single file on the upper and lateral sides of the platform, they are ranked in double order on the bottom section of the frontal side. 41 of these mosaics are attained as undamaged and as in stew. According to calculations, there must be at least 550 mosaics on the podium. Although the lateral sides of the platform are highly damaged and rhymes with reference to the protected parts, it's obvious that they are adorned with flowery motifs through the intaglio technique. Some of these stone 
pieces that belong to leaves of the flower motifs are attained as in situ. Along with these, a large number of golden flags were attained from above and around the podium. Most probably at least one part of the podium must have been adorned with golden flags. The most striking elements that grabs the attention on the podium are the circle shaped four traces located on the adorned motifs. As understood from the other traces whose lines can be trace, traced easily, most possibly there must have been a kind of furniture over the podium. A wall with two meters in weight running on the direction of east-west divides this huge hole and the adorned podium leans on the middle of this wall. While on the east side of the wall, the two meters long, part of which is protected, a frame door is located on its western side of space, a kind of niche within the shape of a semicircle is located. Opening to the back room, the width of this framed door is 1.2 meters and the ground of door is paved with onyx slabs. The back room is closed and sacred room. Approximately half of the ground of this room is floored with onyx blocks. These blocks are paved symmetri symmetrically in the middle of the place and on the other parts, no clear ground can be identified. Thinking of the coating traces with the wide of 10 centimeters located on the outer lines of the coat, it can be proposed that for the parts of the ground of which cannot be identified, there may have been a paving or platform made of wooden or any other kind of flimsy material. The existence of a hollowness with the width of 20 centimeters running across the mud brick walls of the room also attracts notice. You can see this hollowness. This hollowness surrounds the whole wall along with the same line with the marble ground. These traces in question may belong to a kind of platform or they may belong to the wooden bases used to fix the golden flax plaques to the wall. However, thinking that the wall under this hollowness is also painted, it's also possible that this platform cannot be found. The walls of the back room are partly well protected, especially while the western wall leaned on cella and eastern wall leaning on the east facing hall are well protected. The southern wall, wall is damaged to a large extent. The damage is much higher on the western end of the southern wall. It's possible that there may have also been a kind of passing on this part. The walls of the room are coated and painted just like those of the hall. On the western wall, there is an alcove with 1.5 meters in wide and two meters in height. Now we are talking about the findings from this monumental building. As well as architecture of the wall with the podium, the variety of the finds also brings a large number of spatial collection to the Urartian cultural inventory. Some part of these artifacts are made up of unique pieces that we for the first time encounter within the context of 
Urartian art. These artifacts belonging to this peerless collection are assessed in three main groups as the metal finds, stone finds, and bullae. The metal artifacts constitutes the most critical artifact group of the whole with the podium. According to their production material, materials, these artifacts show up in three different types as gold, bronze, and iron. Among these foundling groups, the golden objects have an important place. These golden objects that comprise a rich and critical collection of the whole with the podium vary from rosettes to plaques from gold pieces to sphinxes. Among this variety, the artifacts that mostly attracted the attention are the golden rosettes. These gold covered bronze rosettes are intensely attained from the room located on the sword of the hall through the, they have been detected in various parts of the area. These in stew fondlings support the suggestion regarding the arrangement of the back room. It's observed that a similar type of ornamental technique is also applied in domestic places located in Aenis Castle. The Sphinx constitutes the other most important group of the golden artifacts of the hall with the podium, with golden pieces are adorned with geometric motifs through the technique of relief. Another group of the finds attained from the hall with the podium is the bronze and iron artifacts, but this is very small group. Among the bronze artifacts, there are located rosettes, nails, leaf-shaped bronze objects, and many number of amphorous uh, and uh, uh, diagnostic bronze pieces. Among these artifacts, the most attention attracting group belongs to the arrowheads and leaf-shaped bronze objects. The iron artifacts constitute the last group of finds from the hall with the podium. Within the, this group, arrowheads and one sword take place. The stone mosaics, which are Excuse me. Another critical data group of the hall with the podium is constituted by the stone artifacts before stone artifacts and then we can go to stone mosaics. This large group stone group consists of the stone mosaics, stone vessels, stone beads, and identified artifacts. It's obvious that almost 60 adorned limestone pieces on which there are the wing adornments belonging to the fantastic creatures made of, of griffon heads, winged gods, sphinx, and Griffon's geometric adornments and the adornments of the tree of life. The stone mosaics, which are basic elements of the stone group, are true to have decorated the walls of the building and the podium. These interwoven mosaics, which are made from the limestone and the type of Phonolith, a kind of stone, total uh, 210 mosaic stone are attained from the hall with the podium. They are varying calibre size ranging from the one to four centimeters and which are both nailed and non-nailed. Another subgroup of the stone foundlings are the stone beads. The examples of the stone beads, which had only been gathered from Aenis temple before, are also encountered in the hall with the podium. In the hall where the podium is located and in the little room on the south of the hall, in total 
84 bits were attained. Uh, Sorry to interrupt. I, I, I think inter there's a problem with the presentation. Uh, we are still seeing the, the bronze and iron, uh, the, the, the metal findings. Okay, if you want, I can come back and then I will show. Yes, again. we can try. In All right, way. just a moment, please. Thank you. Pleasure. Uh, can you help me also? If you prefer, we can stop sharing and restart uh, the screen sharing. Just a moment. Okay. All right. Okay, great. From here. Uh, we are currently not seeing your screen. Um, great, now it's working. Yeah, it's and, working. And we, yeah. How can we start yes. here? Yes, thank you. All right. Thank you so much. Okay, pleasure. I am continue. Okay, uh, now uh, I show you again the metal finds especially the gold groups and then uh, the other groups bronze and iron artifacts and stone groups now the mosaics uh, the other subgroups of the stone groups And lastly, the I think we talked about the uh, beads. Now the stone vessels. Uh, I am talking uh, about the this special group. Uh, another important subgroups of the stone uh, group is constituted by adorned stone vessels. It's observed that apart from the temple, these stone vessels now to be peculiar, peculiar to Aenis are unearthed from the hall with the podium. Total 10 stone vessels fragments have been attained from this spatial space. Apart from the, these examples, there are many stone artifacts about which there are uncertainties regarding their function. Six of these artifacts are the stone artifacts that are assumed to be a pieces of the throne, which are similar to the stone vessels with regard to adornment technique and motifs yet different in form. In addition to the damp plastic artifacts that are critical for Aenis and specifically for the Urartian art are also unearthed in this place. The primary of these unique artifacts, the examples of which are encountered in the Urartian art is the lime heat made from limestone. As analyzed, Stylistically and technically, first of all, it looks very similar to the bronze sample. The other unique artifact from this foundlings group is the battering ram, which is produced from the clay stone through carving. The non-existence of any details on the bait side and the traces of the wearing out on the forehead area strengths the supposition that the artifact may be a piece of applique. The bullae constitute the last of the most critical artifact group of the hall with the podium. 
in total eight bullae and bulla pieces, of which are with inscription are unearthed. Since these drop shaft bullae are attained as broken or worn out, the portrayals on many of them are not clear. Studies on this, which can give a clear idea about the function of the building are ongoing. Now uh, we are talking about the function of this monumental building. As expressed above, the hole with the podium in the Ayn Stadel makes us question what was already been known about the Urartian. With this monumental structure, new questions are added over those that already exist. These questions have a great variety ranging from the architectural of structure, the internal organization, to its function. The rich portable finds gathered from the context with this structure and introduced above points out to the idea that the inner organization of the structure must have been highly majestic and luxurious. For this subject, two main problematic visions stand out. Was this structure a kind of temple or it's a kind of throne hall, any kind of really uh, royal activities? As is known, there are seven temples detected through the archaeological excavation and their plans have been clearly identified. Apart from a couple of exceptions, these temples are all the structure with a standard plan, with a free square plan and frame. From this respect, the hall with the podium doesn't suit to the standards of the Urartian temple architecture according to its architectural plan qualities. From the expression in a total able eight bullae and bulla pieces, two of which are inscribed, it's understood that there may be a possible relation between the place and a goddess. According to preliminary studies, the existence of the female names and titles with the bullae also support this opinion. On the other hand, this structure reminds of the places of the royal activities were organized like Apadana. These structures, which can be traced since the second half of the second millennium BC in Anatolia, can be observed in Altuntepe, Armavir Bulur, and Bastam during the Urartian kingdom. An important deficit deficiency in this regard is the lack of many columns seen in such structure. In this context, another opinion regarding the possible function of the hall with the podium is related to the whether the hall would be a throne hall or not. As it is known, there is a no such a clear finding from the excavation until now. The traces of furniture usage detected over the podium are also important details for both visions. The traces over the podium are not limited with these ones. These traces and other rich finds context point out that the podium was highly used and that there may have been a more complex organization over the podium than we have predicted. As a conclusion, this new and extraordinary place with the Ionis castle is a new discovery for the Urartian culture. There are still many questions that awaits answer regarding this place that attracts attention through to its architectural and findings. These questions intensify on the function of the structure, no matter, no matter it is a royal throne hall 
or a new temple model, the dynamism that the structure brings together is out of any dispute. The suggestion to be developed out about its function will, at the same time, conduce to opening of the rediscussion re uh, of many details about Urartian culture. Undoubtedly, the detailed studies on the site and its finds will give us a good result. Uh, within the scope of our recent works, another project is the under, underwater archaeological research in one lake. As known, the relationships of Urartu with the lake is still problematic. How did they benefit from it? And how did it mean to them? Ayenis is one of the few sites which placed on the lake site and it has very nice and long shores. I think Aenis is one of the best place to find answer to these questions. This project has been carried out to, together with archaeology department in Uludağ University in Bursa for three years. Although we have not reached satisfying results yet, but we are hopeful for the future. Finally, I would like to give a brief information about the restoration and conservation works that have been increasing recently within the scope of the INIS project. As you know that the main material of Urartian architecture is mud brick. Mud brick architecture is one of the most troublesome material in terms of conservation and restoration. There are two main ways to this cutting off the with open air and plastering it often. Based on these points, we are trying to find solution with temporary roofs and plastering reinforcement works. Apart from this, restoration and conservation works continue for stone artifacts, architectural remains inside the temple. You can see the restoration works on the intaglio fragments. As a result, we know that the INS site is the common cultural heritage of humanity and our primary duty is to transfer it to generations in the future. As I finish my presentation, I would like to thank to all people and institutions who have contributed to this 30 year adventure. Firstly, to our cultural ministry for their permission and support, and to one museum director, the local governments, and of course, to my team, whose efforts are very, very valuable. Also, I would like to thank you very much to your institution, CAMNES, for this opportunity, and also thank you very much for uh, listener your attention and interest. Thank you. Thank you very much. It was really, really interesting. And this site is amazing. I mean, looking at Thank only you. at the pictures is something uh, um, quite unbelievable. It's it's uh, unique, possibly, in, in the in the Urartu kingdom um we Definitely have some right. questions so this final part as i mentioned is dedicated to questions therefore if you want to comment about uh, these uh, this uh, topic you can write in the uh, live chat here on youtube uh, we have comments and questions actually so um many people actually who uh, thank you and, uh, and some greetings as well. Um, and the question is, uh, um, excellent presentation, thank you. Question, thank you. did you find by any chance some early Iron Age material, perhaps in pits, like in Van Castle? Uh, it's very interesting and uh, important question. 
Unfortunately, very, uh, very, very few uh, fragments belongs to the early Iron Age periods in the, uh, our castle in the Stadel. Uh, just only few fragments, but uh, we couldn't find any level or periods in the castle. Only there are two periods in our castles, uh, completely Urartian period, and then uh, not very strong uh, medieval age. Uh, I think uh, this is very lucky uh, situation because of uh, this situation, our castle uh, not uh, damaged uh, by the medieval period. Thank you so much. Pleasure. Um, many, many comments uh, to, to thank you for your presentation. Um, indeed, a great site, uh, um, says Abu Siddiq. Uh, carry on uh, your good work. Um, yeah, also Abu, Abu is a, our uh, zooarchaeologist in our team. Also, I forgot uh, last two years uh, we are working on the uh, bones, animal bones. Uh, we have very uh, intensive uh, and uh, great collection of the animal bones. We are working on the archaeological project with the Abu. Also, we will publish uh, very soon INS volume, uh, maybe in the in the next uh, months. Uh, also, I will so I will tell you to this uh, kind of news. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. We are really curious <laughs> about <Thank> that. <laughs> um, Many thanks. Uh, we have plenty of comments uh, to thank you. So you will have time to, to look at the live chat and see uh, how many Pleasure people really are uh, enthusiastic about this uh, lecture. Um, but we don't have, it seems we don't have uh, questions, uh, just uh, comments of, uh, of greetings. Uh, uh, so in the, in the meantime, I, I feel lucky because we, uh, I told very clearly no question. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But actually, really? I've got a Thank question. You. So I'm sorry. All of the listeners. I, I would like to to ask you something. So um, uh, I would like to um, learn a bit more about uh, domestic religion at uh, Aegis. Um Does evidence suggest? Uh, I don't know, peculiar cults, uh, peculiar deities uh, uh, which were specifically worshipped at Aegis rather than elsewhere. Uh, you mean the, the local uh, gods? Yeah, god local god gods god. which were worshipped. I, I, actually, actually, the only we know the very common names, the Urartin Pante, Pantheon, but only the new and interesting gods, the Eiduri. Eiduri is very interesting uh, name for the uh, Urartian religion. Uh, before the Rusa period, we don't know anything about these gods, uh, but uh, Aenis inscription uh, in the front of the temple gives some information Eiduri. Eiduri also, you know, uh, the name of the Supan mountain, the Urartian name, also the uh, giving holy uh, position, the, uh, the mountain, and then uh, added to this god, to Pantheon after the uh, Rusa. But uh, we can say the local god or not. We don't know anything about because, oh, you know, the Urartian system completely the uh, state uh, rule is uh, very uh, active, and because of this reason, I think uh, we don't know very few things about the local uh, things or local gods, local local uh, people, local units. Very few things. Really interesting, yeah. this fact. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Pleasure. Thank you very much. Um, I'm looking at the chat. So uh, again, thank you. Thank you. We have another question. Yeah. Um, who is studying the new inscription? 
Roberto Dan asks this. Ah, Roberto asks them. Actually, uh, we are working with uh, uh, Kenan, uh, our Turkish colleague. Uh, uh, we are studying together, but uh, the new periods, uh, we have very few uh, inscription evidence, is uh, literary evidence. Uh, but uh, only we have a uh, few bullae from the uh, the hall with the podium. Also, we have some samples from the northern uh, slopes of the in the front of the fortification walls. We have found some bullae. Also, we published uh, most of them, except of the bullae. We have very few. Uh, literary evidence. Great, thank you. Pleasure. Um, um, please, can you say more on the new inscription? Thanks. These inscriptions are really interesting. Um, Marie Claude Tremouille. Oui. Please, can you say more on on the new inscriptions? Thanks. Of course, of course, this is wishing, I think. We hope that because we need a more, more literary evidence as the, the main uh, aim of the uh, our big dreams. Uh, we found a kind of archive, state archive in uh, Stadel, in the Stadel. This is a big uh, dream for our all archaeologists work in Uratian. You know that uh, the very few uh, literary uh, tradition of the Urartu uh, not reach as well as uh, Mesopotamian culture. Thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm just looking at the many, many messages we have in the chat. Um, but it seems to me that uh, at least for the moment, we don't have any more questions. Um, no, so I, I suggest you to to look at the chat when you have the possibility, because of plenty of people who are thanking you. Yeah. And, and I, I, I want to I want to see. Yeah, <laughs> great. Can I sh see after the presentation? Yes, absolutely. Oh, These messages right. will remain. All right, thank you. So thank you once more for your lecture. It was really interesting for me it and for really, all the people. It was a pleasure for me, uh, the, the presentation, also talking with you. Uh, I feel very good. Thank you very much thank for you. this opportunity. Thank you, thank you, absolutely. And I thank hope so. See you soon. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> Uh, and yeah. thank, of course, uh, to all of you. Thank you for your questions. Thank you for joining us. Um, as for what concerns our next lecture, actually, there's a change of plan. The lecture about the project Aragats by Adam Smith, which was planned for next Wednesday, has been rescheduled. And Adam Smith will uh, present his project uh, on February the 10th. Consequently, our next lecture of the bulletin will not be next week, but it would be on February the 3rd, uh, when Daniele Morandi Bonacossi will discuss Northern Iraqi Kurdistan between the Assyrian Empire and Alexander the Great, the land of Nineveh archaeological project. So thank you again. Thank you once more, Mehmet. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Valentin. Have a nice yeah, you night. Bye-bye. And thank you again to all of you. Pleasure.